A computer is an electronic data processing machine or device that performs function of input, process, and output. Assalamu alaikum, I am Amin Babrazai. We are you will learn in this episode about the second unit of primary components of building blocks of a computer system which is called CPU, acronym for Central Processing Unit. And with it, we will also go through some other relevant internal components like RAM, hard disk, graphic cards, sound cards, and optical drives which are placed in or connected to the motherboard inside cases of desktops or within frames of laptops. In the first episode of this tutorial, we discuss the most common input devices of input unit. If you want to watch the input unit episode first and the CPU afterwards, I have put the link in the description below. And by watching this episode till end, you will learn almost everything about CPU and all relevant components which are necessary for processing information and storing them. So if you are ready, let's get started. CPU or Central Processing Unit, commonly referred to as the processor, is the brain of your computer. The CPU solves all sophisticated algorithms in programming your computer does while running programs or applications. All computers, large and small, must have a central processing unit which consists of two parts, the control unit and the arithmetic logic unit. Each part has a specific function. The control unit. The control unit of the CPU contains circuitry that uses electrical signals to direct the entire computer system to carry out or execute stored program instructions. Like a team leader, the control unit doesn't execute program instructions, rather it directs other parts of the system to do so. The control unit must communicate with both the arithmetic logic unit and memory, which we will discuss function of each one in details. The arithmetic logic unit. This unit contains the electronic circuitry that executes all arithmetic and logical operations. The arithmetic logic unit can perform four kinds of arithmetic operations or mathematical calculations, which are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. As its name implies, the arithmetic logic unit also performs logical operations. A logical operation is usually a comparison. This unit can compare numbers, letters, or special characters. The computer can then take action based on the result of the comparison. This is a very important capability. For example, it enables a computer to tell whether there are unfilled seats on airplanes or one candidate has more words than another. Logical operation can test for three conditions. Equal to condition, less than condition, greater than condition. Memory As we mentioned beforehand that the control unit, which is part of the CPU, communicate with memory. Technically, however, memory is not part of the CPU. Here we explain memory in context of CPU or central processing unit. Computer has two types of memory, which are primary memory and secondary memory. The CPU associated and interacts closely with primary or main memory, also called primary storage, main storage or RAM, random access memory. All these terms are used interchangeably by people in computer circles. RAM plays an important role in quick operation of computer. The primary memory of computer stores all the instruction of operating system and application programs that can be quickly reached by the CPU or microprocessor whenever they are needed. This way it will speed up the performance of your computer than accessing the same data from secondary storage. The more RAM capacity you have, the better your computer acts. CPU uses RAM while running programs and processing information, and it is temporary in nature. That is why RAM is referred to as being volatile memory, because RAM holds and retains information and instructions while computer is running. As the computer is switched off, all the information and instructions stored in are destroyed. Also, there is an area of primary memory which is called cache memory. 
It is the memory which is very nearest to the CPU that a computer microprocessor or CPU can access more quickly than it can access regular RAM. A computer can have several different levels of cache memory. The level numbers refers to the distance from the CPU where level 1 is the closest. Cache memory is sometimes called CPU memory because it is typically integrated directly into the CPU chip or placed on a separate chip that has a separate bus interconnects with CPU. Let us now summarize the primary memory. The chief characteristics of a memory is that it allows very fast access to instruction and information. The more programs you run, the more memory you need, and data is available for use as long as the computer is running. It is worth mentioning here that there is also another type of memory called ROM, acronym for read-only memory, which is permanent in nature and contains basic software and instructions called BIOS, basic input-output system. BIOS is a program fixed and embedded on a device's microprocessor which helps to start the computer operating system after it is powered on and initialize hardware operations and also manages data flow between the computer's operating system and attached devices at the time of boot up such as hard disk, monitor, keyboard, mouse, printer and more. Unlike RAM, ROM retains its contents even when the computer is turned off. That is why ROM is referred to as being non-volatile memory. Secondary memory, also called secondary storage, sometimes called auxiliary storage, is a storage that is separate from the computer itself, where you can store operating system and other software applications and data on a semi-permanent basis, either in form of magnetic storage device or optical storage device. The explosive growth in storage needs has driven the computer industry to provide more compact and more versatile storage devices with greater capacity which is optical storage devices like CD or DVD and magnetic storage devices in form of internal and external hard disk and solid state drives are all considered as secondary memory. Optical storage technology is categorized according to its read write capability. Read only media are recorded on by the manufacturer and can be read from but not written to by the user. Secondary memory or storage is necessary because memory or primary storage can be used temporarily and all data and instructions are destroyed upon switching off the computer, whereas secondary storage media can store as much data as necessary. Graphics cards While the terms video cards, graphics cards, VGA cards, graphics adapter, display adapters, and GPU are often used interchangeably, there is a subtle distinction between these terms. Much like a motherboard contains a CPU, a graphics card refers to a board that incorporates the GPU. This board also includes the raft of components required to both allow the GPU to function and connect to the rest of the system. A graphics card is a computer expansion card that is typically attached to a PCI Express slot, generates a feed of graphics output to a display device such as monitor. A graphic processing unit or GPU that performs the necessary computation is the main component in a graphics card, which comes in two basic types, integrated and discrete. Discrete GPU are often preferred over integrated graphics for increased performance. GPU or graphic processing units are becoming more popular for use in creative productions and artificial intelligence. Sound card. A sound card, also known as an audio card, is an internal expansion card that provides input and output of audio signals to and from a computer under the control of computer programs. All right, so far we have covered the CPU and all the major components works in conjunction with CPU. Let us now briefly cover laptop hardware components as well. The hardware architecture for laptop has gone through a major technological change in terms of a motherboard design and integration of other hardware components. But in terms of functionality and the system architecture, the laptop hardware components also work the same way. That is all this tutorial was about. 
If you like contents of this tutorial, support us by liking this video and subscribing our channel. Catch you on the next tutorial about the output unit.